Detroit is the greatest! Straight up light you on fire for a Coney dog right now. Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. I'm Vinny Stubbs. Jason Jarvey's out this week, and I have a special guest. Um, the 2012 Riff Rock Girl, Juliet Flood. Juliet, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm uh, I'm actually quite hungover, and I took my uh, my good friend and a good friend of the show, Peter, the 21-year-old virgin, out to his first titty bar last night. Oh. Now I let's... took him to two titty bars last night. Oh, nice. Which That's... ones? Now, no, they were dumpster bars. Let's fill her in. Now... Uh, Vinny and Jason do the show weekly, and one week now, Jason had to run some errands, do some things. So Vinny's like, okay, I got a friend. I've known him a long time. He's Pete, the 21-year-old virgin, and he's a nice kid, good guy, works with Vinny. You know, Vinny and the guys are really nice. They're like, Pete, come on now. It's been 21 years. we got to kind of move this along. You're, you're a grown man now. And so Vinny has been trying to, on the podcast, kind of say what's been going on, and now Ever since he came on the podcast, people know him as Pete, the 21-year-old virgin. And now Vinny and the crew are trying to find ways to take care of this kid and uh, make him a man. Yes. So, so tell us what happened last night. Well, I took him out to his first titty bar. We took him to two. First of all, all I do, I get guff left and right from everybody. Everybody that I know, they're like, why are you always picking on him? Why are you treating him bad? I'm like, hey, listen, if I was a 21-year-old virgin, I would, I would hope that somebody would take me out on a podcast, interview me, and take me out. So how, how am I a bad person for this? You were just a little bit too, you know. He was. He it, wanted it. it. it came, yeah, it came off as a little bit like you know. There's teasing, and then on no, some level, you, on. you kind of were laughing a little bit at him, not with him. You know what I mean? It was a little bit. You needed it to be a, deliver it in a little bit different way. That's all, Vinny. So what happened last night? You Listen, took him out, and what happened? This place is called the Chateau Ver. It is the nastiest, most disgusting place on the planet. And I thought he deserved. The, he deserves it. It's <laughs> the easiest place for him to meet somebody. So okay. he spent two hundred forty dollars last night. I felt so bad for this guy. He got four lap dances and like a handful of butt slaps. And I sat there and I watched it. Everybody had their eyes on Pete the entire time. It was just, it was amazing. I was so proud of Pete, but he spent too much money. I feel bad for him. But, uh, and he's still the 21 year old virgin. He's still a virgin, but he got a lap. He got a, he got like how many lap dances? Four lap dances. That's great. I've never, I didn't get any lap dances last night. I don't like that kind of stuff. So, uh, so do you like wink, wink, nod, nod, tell the ladies that, Hey, you know, he's kind of inexperienced or you kind of, yeah, we okay. told them, we all, we told them all, <laughs> it was, uh, it was really disgusting, but I'm, I'm really proud of him. Why didn't you take him to a more upscale place? Why do you take him to a CD? He's got to work his way up. Oh, I've okay. never even been to an upscale place. I don't go into those places. My goodness. I just got like three texts the same day saying vert, vert, vert. I'm like, it's going to happen. I got to take Pete to the vert. And he had. Just a hell of a time. Juliet, do you see what kind of friend Vinny is? That's the kind of thing he tr- tries I'm to do seeing. for his friends. He takes care, tries to take care of them. But, you know, in the end, though, Vinny, the, the goal was to kind of, you know, make him a man. It didn't well, I happen. I broke him in. It, I kind of did. $240, that's a lot of money. It's yeah. not my fault. I held on to his money for him, and he just kept asking me for more and more and more. I'm like, dude, you're going to be broke when you wake up. And uh, I don't even know where he's at. He just left my house at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And we played so volleyball he... afterwards. It was terrible. Now he's broke and he's still a virgin. He's not broke. That's he just spent, did. he just took, two, I don't know why he took $240 out of his account, but he did. And it's all gone. And I feel bad for Pete, but. What do you mean why did he take $240 out of his account? He knows that if you go to a place like that, you got to spend some money. Yeah, know? I understand that. But 240 bucks at that place, that's, <laughs> that's a little much. He should have got a little bit more, I think. Yeah, I feel bad for Pete. He should have got a lot more. Did and, you, did, wait, see, dude, I'm, Pete kept going in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> After every lap dance, Pete would go in the bathroom and he would come out and you'd see like a little bit of bulge out of his jeans. I'm like, Pete, dude, you're so creepy. Sit down and relax. Now, Vinny, don't you, is there a place around town that you know, like a manager or someone that can maybe help the guy out? I mean, no, you, you, no what? one can help this guy out. He's Why his own worst a... enemy. He can't even help himself out. See, 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 here's what you do, Vinny. You hype it all. Oh, yeah, up John, let me hear. You tell me what okay. I got to do. So I, I go on Vinny's Facebook. I'm on Facebook and I run the social media around here. So I go on Vinny's Facebook, and it says, Tonight's the night Pete, the 21-year-old virgin, is going to lose his virginity. That was the tease. 
And you said Pete, we're going to take Pete out to, you know, deliver the goods. He got everything but that. The whole point is you needed to like, I thought you were going what to take What am I somewhere. supposed to do? He refuses to get laid. He will not address the issue. He just... Maybe he's waiting for the right girl. <laughs> you might be right. And and the first girl that he ever got a lamp dance from, I felt so bad for Pete. She was just like, the, it was the worst thing for Pete. But oh, he, my God. He, listen, that drops atrocious. <laughs> you should have seen this girl. You guys, everybody would have just like walked out. It was insane. And Pete was proud. And I'm very proud of him. But I don't understand. See, then he, that's the whole point. The point is, next time, don't post it then. Just take him out and then, and then tell us after the fact. I had to post. I was excited. And you were excited. You thought something was going to happen. You thought maybe, what percentage chance did you think maybe he would get laid last Vert, night? Like 90, to be honest with you. <laughs> and it still didn't happen. It still didn't happen for him. Vinny, I'm going to give you credit. When Jason's out of the studio, you called up a, a friend. I messaged. And Juliet, you messaged her. And Juliet, thank you for coming in here and, uh, you know, being a good sport. Vinny and I are a little bit off the wall. But thank <laughs> you for course. coming in. And, uh, you know, I know podcasting is new to you, but uh, thank you for coming in. I'm looking forward to chatting, getting to know you, and talking a little bit of sports. Yes. For sure. All right. I know so much about sports. Before, you, before we started the podcast, you told me, you're leaving Michigan. I'm kind of sad. Yeah. You know, are you really? Yeah. She's Where not staying with us anymore. Florida. Well, I was thinking about going to West Palm. My friend, he lives in Florida. I was thinking about the hell out of here, too. Why? Why couldn't the great state of Michigan keep a young lady like yourself in, in town? I'm sick of shoveling snow. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and my mom is there, so I'm going to give it a shot. I notice everybody that goes to Florida, they always come back. I everybody like always goes to Florida. No, I feel like people in Florida stay in Florida. People yeah. that go to California, they come back. Texas, they come back. I was thinking about getting the hell out of here, too. I can't stand Detroit anymore. Not take that your... I can't stand it. I just, I like the beach way better. Can you take Vinny with you, please? Yeah, you take... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please. I'd like to get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. And uh, you've, you've had a lot of experience now in, in, in radio around town and doing some mm-hmm. things in promotions. And tell us a little bit about uh, your experiences. Well, I've kind of been in radio since about 2012. I was a riff rock girl. And then... Um, I kind of learned a lot about radio when I did that because I was thinking about going into it. And then I kind of did some promotions for 105.1, and then I made my way to sales for Riff. So I've kind of been around the industry for a few years now. So how does one work into becoming a a Riff girl? Is there a contest you enter, or you were there and you heard about it? How do you enter a contest like that? Well, it's every year they pick a new Mm -hmm. one. So it's you just have to go through a long um, process of getting votes and promoting yourself and you know, I don't think it was too difficult for you to get votes then, I take it. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not easy. How many years have they been doing that? Are you the first uh, one? No. no. <laughs> I'm Right now, they're doing it's the 10th. It's the 10th year anniversary, so there's been 10. Okay. So I was seven. I think there's been three mm-hmm. since me. Yeah. I was for 2012. I was the girl. Okay. And so what do, what do your duties entail as being the riff girl? They call it an entertainment reporter. So I did that on the air, but um, it's mainly going to events. Riff events and talking to people and promoting the station and that kind of stuff. Modeling. Yeah, I loved it. Going to concerts, going backstage. I would do it again if I could. And now you did uh, also some work with 105.1. What'd you do there? Mm -hmm. Um, I was one of the knockouts. Oh. They still have knockouts there? Yeah. Yep. Yep. They still do them. They still have the Mm 105.1 knockouts. Yep. You go around, promote the station and... uh, Yeah. Man, you just missed out on the podcast. You know, they started a 105.1 knockouts podcast. I saw that. that, Are you... (laughs) <laughs> yes, I do. I listen to I listen. Don't you? Mm-hmm. Hell no. Oh, yeah, actually, I do. No, I'm just kidding. I interned for uh, 1051 for uh, eight months. Okay. With uh, Drew and Mark. You know, Vinny yeah. was the super intern spawned by Drew and Mark. Yeah, right? I was the yeah. high maintenance one. I yeah, I saw a little bit. About yeah. That. I I don't really know what how you were high maintenance. Uh, I'm really dumb, I guess. They call me the functioning <laughs> retard. <laughs> Listen, yeah, Vinny would show up late. I, I <laughs> swear to God, in the Holy Bible, I've never showed up late there. Never once. No, you know what? You know what? Intern's supposed to listen to the hosts and supposed to kind of be in the background. No, Vinny's making demands. He's like, <laughs> I need to have my own chair. I need to, you know, be on the air a certain amount of time. Oh, you know, Vin, they were like, "You're an intern, dude. Kind of chill out." <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. We're always the interns. You know, we just treat them like garbage. You know, make them do whatever. We, we're worried about this guy. We're just gonna we're gonna make the whole show worrying about him and what he's doing. <laughs> well, you know what? To Vinny's credit, though, I, I don't blame him. Part, I think part of his duties were to look up some entertainment stories that were of uh, the adult kind. And I take it, and you were probably like, "Why do I gotta come in here and look up adult news every day?" I and, I enjoyed that. That was my favorite part. <laughs> oh, was it? I would just go in there and go on like I would just Google penis news, and I would get everything for, and I just give it to Drew, and he was blown away. Like, oh my god, this material is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julia, you, you thought about some doing some work in radio? What was your initial thought, or what did you want to do? Well, I thought about doing, like, Riff 2 stuff to start out, but um, I would stay, I would go, like, at least once a week and do overnights. 
with Al. On yeah, Al Beck. I like that guy. He's cool. Yeah, mm. he's a good friend of mine. So mm. I learned a lot about it. I learned some um, pro tools and how to use a board and everything like that. But it just, I don't know. It just wasn't the time. They didn't really have room for it in... I you didn't kinda, go to broadcast school at all? I didn't know. Don't do they, it. Well, they used to give that away, a scholarship to Spex Howard. Oh, really? To the Ripper Don't, of your, They nightmare. stopped my year. Oh, of course they did. <laughs> of course. Right. So I would have went, but. Broadcast school is the biggest nightmare of your life. It, it's probably the worst decision I've ever made. Okay. What was the challenge for you, Vinny? Tell us about it. What happened? What do you mean? What, why was Oh, it's just hell. I, I would work full time and go to school, and then I had to intern for eight months, and then I'd do this podcast, and I'm just constantly looking for work left and right. It's a nightmare. Don't do it. Don't ever get involved in broadcast. It's ridiculous. Come on, Vinny. See, it did provide you a chance to learn about, you know, the, the boards. And oh, running. And I, actually, I, and I, and I uh, did volunteer work for the Riff. I worked with you one time at uh, Autorama at uh, Kobo with Meltdown and uh, Emily uh, yeah. Hillier. When I was Rock Girl? Yeah, and I said something um, to you, and you just stared at me like, God, I have no chance in hell in radio. <laughs> Everybody hates my guts. Oh, I don't remember that. I look at Meltdown. So, okay, and, I got a question. I thought see, I probably didn't hear you. When Vinny said we got a Juliet Flood coming in, I'm like, oh, okay, it's your friend, and something like that. You two barely know each other? I don't know her at all. I've never said one you, word. You, I'm so, thank you for coming in. You barely know Vinny. No, I've and seen like, him once in a while at the station, like, okay. smoking a lot. Oh, thank you. Got it. I quit for like three days a couple weeks ago. It was like it was the worst thing I ever did in my life. So now I really thank you for coming in and putting up with him. So now you see kind of what we deal with every time. Yeah. I had so, no idea. So if, it, if, it, if it wasn't for me, it'd be a bunch of... <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just messing with you, Vinny. <laughs> okay, so you wanted to be in radio kind of not, not at the right time. So what have you been doing since? Well, I did more stuff at the station, mm -hmm. and I've always been bartending. So I kind of just kept doing that, and... um. I just really haven't figured it out yet, I guess. Give him a free plug. Where are you working at? CJ Mahoney's in Troy. Oh, very nice. That's a good place. Yeah. Go there, watch some, watch some games, watch the Lions and Tigers and You've all that You've been there stuff. before? Oh, yeah. Been there quite a bit. Good I've beers. Heard, I never good beers, good vibe. Great. It's good times. Mm -hmm. mm. You, you like bartending? Yeah. I mean, it's a job. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I guess I'm pretty good at it, so. What are, uh, what are some of the cocktails a lot of people like there at CJ Mahoney's? What are the ones um, you make the most of, you think? What do people like to order? A lot of beers, a lot of... It's mainly a lot of beers. It's beer town. Yeah. When yeah. they ask me what kind of shot they get, I say just get a shot of Crown. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but, I mean, no, we make some specialty stuff, I guess. We have, like, a cocktail menu for mm -hmm. summer and whatnot, but... Okay, now Vinny, I want to talk to you a little bit about beer because I was just thinking about it the other day because I'm I'm a basic beer guy, you know, uh, Coors Light, Budweiser, stuff like that. But I've, I've been seeing these commercials all the time, you know, Blue Moon has made this new white IPA. It's disgusting. And, and let me tell you, yes, everyone's like, you know, you got to try it. They're this. just trying to be cool. Yeah, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah, you got to try Budweiser's these Budweiser is where you want to go, or Labatt. It's designed for gluttony, and it's just, it's perfect. Yeah, and so. All okay. these microbrews are gross. I like Magic Hat, and it kind of stops there. Okay, so then you and I are in the same boat. So what happened was like, I met Buffalo Wild Wings one night, and the guy's like, you know, oh, yeah, try these IPAs, and he gave you a little sample They're of They're disgusting. Each. I tried four of them, and I'm like, it tastes like soap. And, I, and I'm, I'm like, telling oh. you, guys, just drink those so they can take pictures of it and put it on the internet. They will look cool. <laughs> hipsters, is that blow, a hipster? yeah, yeah, oh my god, yes. Yeah, it blows me away. These guys don't even enjoy beer. I love beer. So do I. I like a good Coors Light, a good, you know, Sam Adams Cherry Wheat. That's good beer. That, that's as far as I'll go. That yeah. right there. I swear to God, I'll I drink that. I okay. love a cherry wheat. So yeah. do I. I love cherry wheat, I but it stops there. A lot of people drink the IPAs because the alcohol content is way higher. It is higher. Is that what it but is? Like, I like, don't almost like 7%. That. Because the people that love it say it's an acquired taste, they but just they rave want to look about cool, it. cool, John. Don't what like don't it. you understand? Okay, that's what it is because I'm wondering. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big beer guy. I'm just a basic the guys guy. guys that drink that stuff will yeah. let you know that they drink it because all they'll do is they'll, they'll take pictures of it and put it on the internet. It blows me away. I'm like, dude, we don't care. Yeah, and I listen to other podcasts. They're like, oh, I love this. Uh, no, they don't. Certain IPAs and IPAs, IPAs. I'm like, what's this IPA craze all about? And I tried. I'm like, I, I can't get into the acquired taste. It tastes like soap. You're, You're not a hipster, John. You got to get with it. Don't you want to no. be cool? Just give me, give me ice cold glass, draft Coors Light. You got a happy man. I'll, I'll be the happiest guy in the place. That's all I need. Coors Light. <laughs> Coors Light is like the worst beer on the planet, <laughs> yeah. John. I'm sorry. What? It's yeah. Uh, that's why I said I'm. I'm simple. Simpleton. So I was wondering if it was just me, but I was like, it tastes like soap, and I can't get it's an it's. I don't want to try to make an acquired taste for me personally. No, no, I, I totally agree. We get a lot of beer snobs that come in. Oh, what are your IPAs? Oh, because you it's, it's Troy. What do you expect? I, oh. <laughs> I, I, last night I gave this guy a beer and he's drinking it. And then he's like, you know, um, I think you maybe need to clean the lines on this IPA because I can tell the taste is a little bit off. But You're it's okay. Me. It happens all the time. He's going on and on. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just switch this out for you. So you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of friends at the bar that are uh, you hang out with? Yeah. And they, they say the bartenders know how, to, know how to have a good time. You guys go out, out and about around Troy or yeah. around town? Well, we can. I'm, I mean, they work nights. You know, we work nights. So mm -hmm. 
It depends on who has what night off. But yeah, we do once in a while. We have fun. We go out. You ever right. hear how much like money all the guys make up at the bar when they're talking to you? They always they they have to add the fact that they gross a hundred thousand oh, dollars a yeah. year. As well, enjoy. they're the biggest liars on the planet. Those are the guys asking me for cigarettes yeah. outside. I'm mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, dude! You make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Why are you asking me for a mm-hmm. cigarette? <laughs> we we get a lot. I, yeah, I don't want to mention who, but we get a lot of that. Uh, or they like treat you like you're, you know a nobody and they're like some big shot and i'm thinking i probably they treat more. you like that sometimes they do the guys i think they're so great and i'm thinking i probably make more money than you <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> they're just insecure trust me that's all it is so what doesn't the, bother me so what's the biggest annoyance at being a bartender i know it's fun you interact with people but then towards the later end of the night i know people sometimes maybe drink too much they start getting you know rude and uh you know demanding what's it like you know towards the end of the night or, or a time when people are kind of you know having too much fun drinking yeah. too much I mean, I can't really complain. It's okay. I, Sometimes we complain a lot, and it's like, we actually do okay. That's why I don't really work Friday or Saturday night, because mm-hmm. I can't handle that many drunk people or young drunk people. Younger people come out on Friday. I can't deal with it. It makes me want to lose my mind. So that's mainly my problem is that. Or you do the same thing every day. You talk about the same thing every day with the same people. That gets annoying, but I can't really complain about it. I like it. I like my job. I like my bar, so... Are they aware that uh, you're going to be putting in your two-week notice for any time soon? <laughs> yeah, that, yep, everybody knows. So. Okay, that's When are you going to Florida? Soon. I'm waiting to uh-huh. hear about a place down there, but mm. yeah, pretty soon. All right, so. so if all goes well, you're in Florida, what are you looking to do? What are you trying to accomplish now? You, you're in your mid-20s, you want to get successful, get this career off the ground. What do you want to do? That's the big question. <laughs> it sucks. You're with the doc. You, you're with the I doc, and the I... doc can help you. Well, I can't figure it out. I was going to go back to school for teaching. I've been to culinary school. Um, I like radio. I like sales. And um, basically, I just bartend. So I really, I, I don't know. You want to help me? Yeah. No help me. I can <laughs> help you go to California and be a model. Uh, I think I'm too old, actually. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, Nonsense. Um, it's really competitive. You ever thought about TV, entertainment news, uh, hosting, stuff like that? I yeah. thought about it. So yeah, when I was thinking about Specs Howard and whatnot. I was thinking, well, maybe I would do the TV end of it. But, I mean. Vinny's over here shaking his head. head Why? Do it. Why? I can't hear you shaking your Dude, head. No one is doing anything with, with their degree. It's insane. Everyone's just well, scrambling around looking for work. A it's lot crazy. of people that work in the industry don't even have degrees in it. Or they never even went to school for it. So, And, Vinny, you can't say nobody. Our boy, she Jason. Could be a bill reporter. Our boy, Jason. Parlayed it into a, you know, he's doing great things at 105.1, hosting his own fantasy show. Come on. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about Jason. <laughs> okay. So, you know, so now you can't say nobody. Our guy, we, we, we work with Jason here, and he's doing great things at 105. It took me, I've, I've been graduating now for eight months, and I'm just now starting to get interviews. There and I go. have to drive like 50 miles out of my way to go do it. It's then, tough. Didn't yeah. anybody tell you? It yeah, it sucks. Tough. And... That's why we're trying to do our own thing. That's right. That's why, like, and if you hadn't gone to Specs, I wouldn't have you in here. <laughs> you what are you right? talking about? You got experience on the air you got an internship at 1051 you got experience and now you know a little bit about what's going on here you know more probably about what what these knobs mean than and what it's i do still impossible to get a job Takes i'm time. just now getting interviewed my my resume is stacked i have a demo i got a million references i need someone's phone number up from you by the way <laughs> <laughs> okay. so riff rock girl 2012 and they've they've had what two or three after you Three. Three. Okay. Two. And, They're on the third one after me. I've seen all of them, and I I think that you should just be the permanent Riff Rock Girl, because there's I don't really, to be honest with you, there's no one that even comes close. Well, thanks. Okay, uh, so then being honest, okay. I'm serious. So now, okay. You might think I'm kidding around. I'm being serious. Now, yes. So people tell people, if you feel comfortable, tell tell the audience who's listening th- via the podcast and iTunes a little bit about yourself. Describe yourself a little bit. Um, I'm about 5'6". What else? <laughs> you have, Do you want to know? You have medium-length brown hair, blonde hair. Uh, yeah. I have ombre, I think, or balage, balage hair, mm-hmm. I guess they call it. Very lovely tan. You go tanning? Thank you. Um, no, I haven't been in a tanning bed in a couple of years now. John goes every day. I, <laughs> yeah, look at me. I can tell. It's very nice. I Well, I've been trying to get out on the boat and stuff. I was just in Florida like a couple weeks ago. I'm like, yay, Florida for my birthday. And it rained the whole time. It rains every day oh. in Florida. Well, no, it wasn't just the normal Florida rain. Like it rained and then it's sunny. It was like straight up the sun didn't come out mm. for a week. So Sounds like my luck. You mid-20s, 25, 26? 26. 26 years old. And are you single? Yeah. Currently single. Okay. So yeah. you're going to Florida. No attachments here to Michigan. That's right. What, what kind of boy uh, gets your attention? I guess I don't really have a type. I mean. Treats you nice. Yeah. Okay. Nice guy. Kind of headed in the right direction. Career oriented. Guy. And then uh, when's la- the last serious relationship was uh, how long ago? In order for us to help you, we got to make sure that uh, you haven't had too much, too, too many failed relationships. No. Okay, I've, good. I've, well, I've only really had one real one. 
That's good. Yeah. That's good. So you're still hopeful. You still believe in love and uh, yeah. all that good stuff. Well, that that was like a seven year long one. So oh, I'm. <laughs> oh, okay. Kill me. <laughs> yeah. Kill, exactly. Kill me. <laughs> That's okay. Listen. But I'm, yeah, I'm good now. So. Um... Okay. So now, when you're in a seven year relationship, now you know what you don't want, what you're looking for, yeah. and now you're ready for a fresh start there in Florida. That's right. Hopefully, I mean. We all wish you luck. I think you're gonna do good. You There's a lot have... of old people there, but. Should have no problem. There's man. a Just... lot of old balls in Florida. <laughs> right. So it's maybe I can find a. A sugar daddy or something. <laughs> That's an option? <laughs> Not a real one. But... Okay, gotcha. Oh, you never know. Okay. I might run into some bad luck, but... Do you guys try to pick you up at the bar? Where are you working? <laughs> yep. Okay, what kind of lines do they try on you now? I know guys use lines, and it, it's it's something that we, you know, that should be kind of let go, but guys are kind of immature, and, they, and you know, you said guys in their mid-20s, they try to use lines to pick you up probably, right? Yeah, mid twenties, mid thirties, mid forties. Really? Oh, yeah. the, those yeah. are your sugar daddies right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So we haven't matured yet. We haven't right. helped the guys out too much here on the podcast, huh? Yeah, I've heard a lot. Of, I can't even remember most mm-hmm. of them because they're just so kind of just whatever. But I mainly because of my name, I get the whole Romeo thing. Yeah, doesn't that suck? A few times a night, whatever. I mean, it girls is what try it to is. talk to me now because I did all this stuff in radio, mm-hmm. and it's like you could tell, you could see right through it. You kind of don't want anything to do with them. They only want you because you're fame. My fame? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm famous. <laughs> so let's help Vinny out here. So if he wants to, uh, you know, meet a nice young lady and he wants to take her out, what what, what are some things he can do to kind of? Uh, hey, let's help take her out? a time out. First of all, I don't need any advice. I don't. I need... feel like you do. I don't. What? See, look, I'm. I think I'm the only one with the ring on in this room. I don't need any <laughs> advice. What are you? Are you serious? <laughs> I think you do. I think you need advice. Well, I'm not looking for anybody. What are you talking about? See, that's why. Probably not go look for girls at the place you went last night. I didn't. Uh, Listen, that. I was going for a friend. I don't like those kind of places, and I, I didn't talk to anyone. That's what they all say. I Every swear, guy says, oh, I was the I only person places. out of six of us that did not get a lap dance. I didn't I didn't even care. I was I was there to help my friend Pete, and I succeeded at it, and he failed. Okay. But I still I didn't I didn't go in there to look for a lap dance. Those girls were hideous. Why would you go there? I felt bad for them. I almost walked in there with holy water and just started throwing it at people. I felt so bad for is those that, ratchets. Is that like the traffic light? I hear that one's the worst. I don't one know where that's Mount at. Cl- this place Clemens. is the worst gentleman's club. There's I've some ever good seen one. I like going once in a while. What the Trumps? I like Legends. I've never even been to those places. Yes, that's awesome. So you like to go to strip clubs with your friends and uh, yeah. make a night of it, have some drinks and have some laughs. Yeah, That's not. Fun. I mean, not all the time. I would no, yeah. every week or anything. But oh, but here's something funny. I put my podcast cards in the bathrooms of those titty bars. <laughs> my friend comes Shameless. out of the bathroom. He's like, hey, man, do you know this guy right here? I'm That's like, go put that back in the bathroom, asshole. He probably got herpes. <laughs> okay, so I think the first piece of advice for Vinny is you got to find a nice, wholesome girl. So maybe yeah. John, I don't care. I don't need any advice. What are you trying to do over here? I'm really try, I try to help you on the podcast, try to help you in life, too. You have a nice young lady here. She'll tell you where to meet. Where do you meet nice girls at? The grocery store. <laughs> yeah, church. Plenty church. of fish. <laughs> church. Christian Mingle. Okay. Farmers only. I'm... All right. Christian All right. Mingle. Can you imagine meeting somebody off a of Christian Mingle? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I right. talked to girls from church before. They're the craziest ones on the planet. Trust me. Juliet Flood's here. She's been a good sport. We'll ask one question, and then we'll start talking sports. Are you on Tinder? No. Good girl. All right. Good job. <laughs> Plenty of fish. <laughs> I thought about the Bumble app. Grinder. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm, no. A, I'm that's creepy. John's on Grinder. What's Grinder? I don't want to know. It's a gay plenty of food. <laughs> All right, good. Good for you. Yes, don't go online. It's just I, I personally I think that uh, it takes a lot for an, a relationship to work, and meeting online adds a level of uh, difficulty that you don't do need. not well, I mean, meet anybody online. Yeah, it is the most insane thing you can possibly do. Wouldn't it be really weird? And isn't Tinder just like a hookup app? Yeah, I can't do that. That's no, it's insane. Okay. I've met two people online and uh, from it was, what uh, plenty of fish. Yes, it is. <laughs> you're on plenty of fish, but you're not going to take any. Advice? No, I'm not on plenty of fish anymore. You see what I'm saying? I was. Listen, I live in Redford. It's the worst place on the planet to meet girls. I There's live in people... Warren. <laughs> That's just as bad. It's that, that Redford and Warren is like the same thing, except it's on the east side and this is on the west side. But there's more things to do in Warren. There's like more bars and people are more. I've noticed that people on the east. I think I belong yeah. on the east side. You do. You do. East side people, people are better. People on the west side, they're such douchebags, dude. And I and I I never could fit in with anybody. Everyone there just thinks they're better than everybody. But I come out here, everybody seems like they're more down to earth. And I don't know what. I don't know how the hell it just changes from the east side to the west side. Just, it's it's a huge difference. And I I go out with Adam, and I just get along with everybody. I have always have a good time. I agree with you. And I go out on the west side. I hate everybody on the west side. Yeah, they're I grew all up... on their phones twenty four seven, and they all think they're better than you. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in East Detroit, so I'm an East Sider for life, and now I just I'm in Macomb, so it's good stuff. Yeah. East Sider. Oh wow. EOD. EOD. There What's you go. EOD. 
Uh, I, I say Dequinder. Is it Detroit? No, uh, East of Dequinder is right. 100%. <laughs> EOD. Uh, what do I know? All right, Julia, do you have uh, I know. I know everyone here, big on sports, big in Detroit sports. Who, who are the teams that you like to follow or keep an eye on? Who's your team? If you go to one or two uh, sporting events, what do you like to go to? Down to Comerica, yeah. or Field? Or, I or... like uh, Tigers games, and I like Red Wings games. Oh, why? Why you watched you... Tigers last night. <laughs> it was horrible. I hear they're horrible. I haven't been keeping up on it. No one blames you for that. And I haven't even, I got into one game this year, but with work, but I, mm-hmm. I haven't been keeping up on it. When you go to games, you go to have a couple beers and kind of yeah. be around people, have a chat, and you're not really following along too much at the games, are you? No, I mean, I enjoy it. I understand it. I just, I'm not, like, huge into it. Who's your tiger? Who's who's your favorite player? Who's the new one that shaves his face with an axe? Exactly. Oh, Daniel <laughs> Norris. He's kind of, Daniel Norris? Yeah, okay. I think he's my new. He's your new tiger? He's kind of caught your eye. You got a little sparkle in your eye there. <laughs> well, hey, if you're listening, his oh. name, what's his name again? Daniel Norris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good. You don't Daniel even know Norris. his name? <laughs> Come she, on. She knows he's, see, he's a new sensation. I got a crush on the guy, too. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk a little bit of Tigers, Vinny. No, I uh, want to talk Lions before Tigers. That, the ahead. Tigers, that is last. Okay, go ahead. They don't even deserve our attention. Did you watch the first preseason game? Because I know you tweeted out that you were very excited and that uh, you were going to, you know, football's back and that you wanted to see what's going on with the Lions. Yeah, I went down to the Firebird Tavern. I was supposed to go in the game. And my friend that works at the Firebird Tavern says, well, we'll just wait until I get off work. Stafford will be off the field, but we'll just go in anyway. I'm like, yeah, right. So I went into the bar and I drank two Jack and Coke. I power drank two Jack and Cokes really fast. And I got really drunk and just started tweeting a bunch of nonsense about the Lions. And I deleted all of them. I was so embarrassed. Oh, no, good. I didn't, I didn't see any of them. That's good. <laughs> yeah, good. I deleted them really quick. What'd you think? First preseason game. You know, the, the, the first team offense looked pretty good. Dude, listen, I think they're going to go to the playoffs. <laughs> Oh, my God. You, they changed your mind? Dude, I'm not kidding you. That was... Hold up. Dude, listen. I know what you're going to say. They do this every year. Hey, that's unbelievable! It's pretty unbelievable, but I'm going to tell you right now. Amir Abdullah looks like Javid Best. And I don't see any problems with his ball handling issues. <laughs> he doesn't have any. The guy's a stud. He was uh, seven touches for 67 yards, and he had a 45-yard run. Now, do you see how quick he is? Dude, he made moves. He's just like Javid Best. People are talking like around town and nationally that he's like Barry Sanders. That's no, what, come on, dude, that's ridiculous. Little, yes, pump the brakes. But you were you were impressed with his um, with his first performance versus the Jets. Now, was it him and the offensive line, or was it the fact that the Jets I, are putrid? They're horrible. The Jets are brutal. They're like beyond terrible. And the offensive line, just from the eye test, they were getting bullied. They didn't look that great. And Amir Abdullah was uh, breaking ankles out there, and he's really quick. So when Joy Bell goes in there, I don't think the I think the guy's gonna rush with like. Three and a half yards per game, per carry, I'm sorry. And uh, their offensive line doesn't look that good to me. I'm oh. sorry. But uh, Stafford looked really good, and Golden Tate, what can you say? Now, you tweeted, you did tweet I've out- seen this M Live report, this, mm-hmm. this Kyle Minky guy, he said that Larry Warford said he's seen fle- uh, feet flying in the air from Lake and Tomlinson, throwing guys around. I didn't see that. No, he, he had a good first performance. The Vinny, Jets are you, brutal. Though. You got to remember, you, you don't get to see in the trenches a little bit, but there was movement. The Lions offensive line was moving the Jets backwards. What the hell are you talking about? They the, were getting bullied. It, no. They, I'm were, telling you. There were plays where the Lions offensive line moved the Jets. There were good plays. Then you saw you saw the fact that uh, Dude, Amir Abdullah in the press conference, the he said that um, the offensive line opened up some holes, and he was able to pick the right hole, and he was able to show explosiveness, and he's a player that everyone around town is like, Let's get on the bandwagon. I'm I'm pretty excited for him. Julia, what do you think about Lake and Tomlinson? He's great. <laughs> He's um really good. I don't want to lose it. you here. <laughs> now you obviously um you know you know the Lions kind of struggle a little bit and yeah. they they haven't been to the playoffs too often. But you keep you keep tabs on the Lions a little bit. Um, I here and there. Mm-hmm. I work at a sports bar, so yeah. that's about it. I okay, <laughs> I'm so you not know, a huge not huge into football. Okay, not big into football. Well, around town, let me tell you, we got a quarterback. He's really t- he's really the guy that we're all looking to to he's very um, inconsistent. Yeah, he's a little bit inconsistent, mm-hmm. but he's the, he's a superstar potentially. And but the problem is though he does he's, he doesn't bring it consistently, and so that's why his name is Matthew Stafford, and he he was drafted that number name? one. He's, that's his name, Matthew Stafford. I'm helping I, her out. I knew that. That yes. that I didn't know. Yes, and and we're looking for him now to win a playoff game. That's what we're looking for. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Good luck. That'd be nice. So Vinny, I'm shocked because if you listen to previous podcasts, Juliet, and you're going to start listening now. I know I got you to subscribe, mm-hmm. so I'm very happy. Um, Vinny was a guy that would talk about the Lions kind of in an angry way. You, you have two kind of fans, basically, Juliet. You have two fans. You got the fans that are hopeful. They're like, this is a new year. This is a new situation. Let's go. Let's have hope. And then you got 
a lot of old time fans who remember just back like seven years ago, we didn't win a game all year. You know, 2008, we didn't win a single game for the whole year. And Vinny was kind of one of those fans. He was angry and was like, I don't think anything of this team. I can't invest. One preseason game got you to say, you think the Lions are going to make the playoffs? Dude. I'm pretty happy. I'm happy then that they did that. I'm pretty shocked. They're clicking it, on all cylinders. And then there's fans like that, that mm-hmm. as soon as they it de- starts, they're like, oh, yeah. They're you go through great. what I've gone through my whole life with the Lions. You, tell, you'd tell be her. flip-flopping, too. The next step is you just give up. I mm-hmm. punch holes in the wall because of them. I've gone outside and punched the sidewalk. I've broken beer bottles on the ground. Mm-hmm. I've gotten the cops called on me. I've punched holes in my brother's wall. I've mm-hmm. cried. I've laughed. Mm-hmm. I've hugged my friends. Okay, so and now, I contemplated suicide because now, of the Lions. See, now you got me thinking about something with Juliet. Now you you dated someone for seven years. Was yeah. he a big sports guy? Did he watch sports and he put maybe sports ahead of your needs a little bit, or, was, um, or did you but, let or did you let him do it? Well, it was with the Tigers. He was like that with the Tigers. One time we were walking home. Well, not we were walking to our car at Comerica, and we had been out. It was um, a playoff game. It was mm-hmm. like the playoff game. They had to win anyway. We were out during the day out at bars and we weren't, we didn't have tickets. So we were walking and people were just walking to the game and he was so excited. He's clapping. He's like, whoa, 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 cheering. And he's like, come on, everybody. And they weren't paying attention to him. (laughs) Mm -hmm. They were just like looking the other way. And he got so upset that they didn't have the same like excitement that he did that he started crying. Oh, we don't play that. Oh, <laughs> look at Vinny's face. Oh, my God. He was, what? He oh, was, my God. Okay. <laughs> we, we'd been drinking, but he was so upset. He was so into his tigers. They were right? his tigers. You know what? Though? I, I understand completely because he was so excited. And so you want to share that excitement. Like, if the, listen, I'll tell you. If the Lions win the Super Bowl and Adam and you guys are around, Stop, we're going to be hugging. We're going to be hugging. And man, bro, and what? Oh, we don't play that. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you just say? Gay, naked, hugging. <laughs> no, no. We'll be hugging, high-fiving. Maybe I'll, I'll shed a tear because I, I was a season two. I'm player. not going to lie to you. I cried when the Lions were 5-0 and and they beat the Bears on Monday Night Football. See, this is normal. <laughs> See? It was There's... happy crying. I'm not crying because no one's like so cheering along with me in the Tigers. So that's... that's what I just go, you guys suck. And this is why this the, is Detroit. That's a turnoff though, right? That's not really attractive, is it? That's a turnoff. That's like you got to get the hell away from that person immediately. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and that's why he's... <laughs> X. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. like literally insane. Yeah. So the only time I get that excited is Super Bowl or that's it. Did you let him like indulge in his sports, like watch the games like that? You didn't get Yeah, to... I was fine with it. I, I mean, if you're that into something, that's fine with me. I like it. That's right. And now Vinny, the Lions, oh, first preseason God. game. They got you back on the bandwagon, man. I'm on it. Who else um, did you kind of uh, keep an eye on? Oh, I, have, I have one negative remark. Uh, Darius Slade. He talks a lot of garbage. Mm -hmm. He got burnt two times by Brandon Marshall, and Ryan Fitzpatrick is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he looked like Tom Brady. Darius Lee also dropped an interception. Yeah, Chris Ivory got like two, three, four yards a run. The defense, that opening drive, didn't look that good. They didn't give up that many points, and they stopped them in key situations. But the oh, defense dude, the was concerning. Was so good. I don't even care anymore. You don't care? Uh, we're, we're, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Stay with stay, stay on task. Okay. The defense. You, you said Darius Slay was a concern. The opening drive, you did notice that Chris Ivory was getting a lot of early yards, mm-hmm. and they, they weren't oh, getting that early miss pressure. So much. I, I, who the hell said it? Drew Lane said it yesterday, just like I said, that Nick Fairley. Like, how do you draft this guy? You invest so much time into the guy, and then you just give up on him. Uh, what the hell? Why? Why would you get? You got rid of Sue. Why wouldn't you resign fairly? I mean, give him a two-year deal. Why do you give up on a guy like that? It, it makes no sense. You well, got Tyron Walker and Karan Reed. You 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 could tell that they were missing something with Sue being gone. It was it was so obvious. Yeah, with Nick Fairley. I don't know how the hell they're going to plug the hole. It doesn't make any sense. Well, he had weight issues and he was inconsistent. And so then what? That injury. He was just not on the field as much. And sometimes when you commit money to a player, you need him to play. You think and, Slay got burnt because of the defensive line? Being dilapidated? I think so, yeah. And I think that's... So uh, get ready and, for that. And remember, Brandon Marshall ain't no joke. And that was Ryan Fitzpatrick, by the way. He ain't no joke either. So I'm just saying, wait till they're on uh, national television getting burnt by Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers. So... And Sam Bradford. Okay, so t- coming <laughs> away from the first preseason game, a lot of people will say, it's just the preseason. Why are you getting so excited? Why did? Why are you so, like, into it when it's just really, in essence, a glorified practice? Who the hell practice? talks like that? People are saying that, you know, it's just the preseason game. So? And you got to temper your excitement, man. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's the Lions. I was so bummed out and Stafford threw a touchdown and they, they only put him in for one drive. I almost cried. You want to know why? <laughs> you want to know why? They're going to do whatever they can to ensure that Stafford doesn't get hurt. Because if he gets hurt, you saw the backup quarterback situation. Kellen Moore was terrible. 
Dan oh, Orlov. Dan Did you Orlovsky? see his haircut? Oh my gosh, ridiculous, inexcusable, inexcusable. So, are you looking at the backup quarterback situation with the Lions? I don't even know how they're in the NFL. Yeah, I literally don't. I can't. I can't even understand it. So, if Stafford gets hurt, we're done. Yeah, that's what. It, that, that's the general consensus. They can literally. Okay, it's week three. We're two and one. Stafford's out. We're going two and fourteen. They're not going to win another game. Mm-hmm. The quarterbacks are so bad. It's like criminal that those guys are on the on the roster. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Kellen Moore is a third string quarterback. Dan Orlowski, I don't understand. First of all, you're part of the 08 Lions. You should be in prison for that because that is borderline criminal. It really is. Mm-hmm. You don't think so? Yeah. I, I, I don't even think that guy can make a, a roster spot in the AFL. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how the hell he's on the Lions. It makes no sense. First preseason game, Calvin Johnson did not play. We guys we talked about oh, it. Oh, he didn't play? The, no, I was Calvin wondering Johnson. why they didn't target him. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, and we talked about it on the last podcast. I think it's a good idea that, you know what, Calvin Johnson just stay on the sideline, not even play at all in the preseason. You think he should just stay on the sideline? He he, he knows the plays. He knows the— I, I don't really care. Because if he gets in the game and he's hurt, you know, then you're going to have a situation I where just the offense want, is going to struggle. I just don't want them—I don't want Calvin Johnson— Well, if he doesn't play at all, then, you know, Stafford— when the regular season starts, he's just going to target Calvin Johnson, and there's not going to be any like chemistry with him and Golden Tate. So it'll make Stafford more inconsistent. Yeah, possibly. I don't know, but uh, I don't. I don't necessarily really care if he plays. I just don't. I hope that uh, his mind's not rattled in the regular season, and he's just throwing the ball downfield to Calvin Johnson when Golden Tate's wide open. You know what I mean? Now, Juliet, we got a young player that's drafted in the second round, so he's kind of fa- fairly good, and his name is Amir Abdullah. Early on, people are saying that you know what? Wow, compared to the Lions, because you know the Lions don't have. A history of having a lot of great players. They don't. He, no. So in, in in practice in training camp, there are a lot of people are saying like, "Wow, this guy's fast. This guy has a chance to be uh, a superstar." And early on, he 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 had a nice big run. So he's a football player that's going to be uh, known around town. So look, look for that name, Amir okay. Abdullah. Theo Gridiron. Amir Abdullah. You got it. <laughs> why do you keep saying Theo Gridiron? I don't know. Why I hate it. <laughs> Come on. Why? What are you talking about? <laughs> Remember they used to just like kick field goals in the 08 season and mm-hmm. Dylan oh, Dyer would sing the song? I'm like, yeah. you didn't even score a touchdown. You know what? Let me tell you something. The extra point is corny. I don't like it. I don't like the new the rule change. Did you see that? You know, shifted the, the, the kicker back a little bit, a little bit oh, over. Oh, yeah, John, John, listen. It's horrible. Whatever they can do to destroy every sport, they're going to do it because mm-hmm. they've been doing it for a long time. Baseball is destroyed with the instant replay. There's no, like, there's no emotion anymore. And they're just killing every sport. And pretty soon they're, in baseball, they're just going to put microchips in the plates and on the players' cleats. Yeah, and they're going to eliminate umpires, and it's just going to be a. And they want to, and they and they say they want to speed the game up, and it's doing nothing but slowing it down. Yeah, I I don't know why I mess with the good thing. The extra point is because they want to destroy it, John. Don't you understand? It's I, like a bunch of guys, like up, upper class guys, are like sitting in an office. Like, what do we do to destroy football? Oh, I got it. We'll change the extra point. Oh my this god, this is bad. It's pretty terrible, mm-hmm. and that's just what they do. I'm trying to look something up here, John. What are you trying to look up? Uh, something about the Tigers threw me off guard. You're excited. I'm very happy that you're now on the Lions bandwagon. That's I'm really good. It. You're on it. I'll probably be off in like five minutes. <laughs> Just keep talking. I'm going to get pissed off. <laughs> no, no, that's good. You're on the bandwagon. Now, the next game, I think, is Thursday, um, this week versus Washington. In Washington? Uh, I think it's on the road. Yep, on the road versus hmm. Washington. And they're going to, um, the offense is going to play a little bit more. So you should look for Stafford. Based on last year, he's probably going to play two to three series and uh, look for continued success. I think that the offense is going to be very successful this year and maybe get into the top 15. The defense, I'm a little bit worried about. The new guy that we picked up to replace Sue, Haloti Nada, was out with a hamstring injury. I'm starting to get a little bit worried in that you know he's a little bit older. He's not going to play the entire preseason. You know, are you a little bit worried that that? Yeah, hamstring... he played 13 games last year and got busted on PEDs. Mm-hmm. And... You switched to a 4-3 defense from a 3-4 defense, and you're what? How old is he? 32. 33? We'll see. I don't know. Not good. Are you worried at all, though? That, with that yeah, hamstring? I'm worried. What are you talking about? I just said I'm worried about it. How worried? On a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. Like 8 and a half. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried, too. Um, he's a big part of that defense. He's the, he's, uh, um, he's the guy that's going to replace Sue, who left. So. Do you know who Sue is? Yeah. He cries. Because <laughs> of the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> I think he cried when he got that contract offer in Miami, because, you know, uh, in Florida, no income tax, another advantage. God, that's disgusting that you can like, even think about that. You don't think that factor into why he left? Yeah, it factors in, but that's redi- it shouldn't. That's crazy. You been to any? You been to four? You're gonna leave a playoff team to go play for the Dolphins because of the taxes. It's a lot of money. It's like about 10- money. Everything's about money. You, Isn't that sick? Mm-hmm. You been down to Ford Field? You like the vibe down there? Um, I've been once. Okay, was one, it recently? One football game. Mm-hmm. One time. Mm-hmm. Was there any crying? No, no, I wasn't. Really, with him. not into he football. Cry about the Lions anyway. Yeah, I, I feel like you'd be into football. You know that there's a lot of action, a lot of not into it, huh? I'm just, I don't know why. I'm not huge into it. I, no. I would like to go to a football game. I've just only been to one. It was like okay. a few years ago, though. 
Have Everybody you, cries when they're leaving there. <laughs> you've been to East Lansing, Ann Arbor, hang out for college towns, anything like that, tailgate? No, you, I haven't. I've been, I when I did 105-1 stuff, yeah. I was down there at the uh, Michigan game, but I didn't go to the game. So people like, when, you, when you're a knockout girl and you're a riff girl and you're meeting people, are people like okay or are they a little bit like awkward? Because a lot of sports fans are guys and tend to, to not be 100% like, like myself, suave and understand how to communicate and things like that. How are they when uh, they come up to you and you're interacting with them, giving away these bands and, and 105.1 stuff? Are they cool or is it uh, yeah. a little bit awkward? I mean, a lot of people are awkward, but a lot of people are just drunk. So oh. it's, <laughs> it's oh, I see. a big mix of people. Really? Yeah. Any drunk tales when you were a knockout or a riff girl? Mm, uh, nothing too crazy. That's I good. mean, I'm, I'm around it all the time. So, so kind, I'm kind of, yeah, doesn't phase me. So Vinny, you're on you're on board, you're on the bandwagon. Let's just see. That's just and now we we escaped the game without too many injuries, so that's good. I know one key injury occurred <clears throat> and it doesn't look too good for the player, but I'm I'm fairly happy we escaped game one. We're okay, and we're gonna continue to watch the Lions and hope for continued success. Let's keep the let's keep Vinny on the bandwagon. Let's keep me on. All right, and then uh, to wrap up the podcast before we get to uh, length or girth and the, the bar of the week, too. we gotta talk about the Tigers. Yeah. Miguel Cabrera came back. That was probably the last spark that the team had. All right, I don't Terrible. think the Lions are going to the playoffs. You changed already? I'm, I'm going to change my mind. Okay. they got to learn how to play outside in the cold. <laughs> and until they do that, I don't know. Okay, so the Tigers, let's I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Tigers should give you a reason to cry. I gave up on them. You gave up? Yeah, sometimes. When Miguel Cabrera announced he was going to play on Friday, mm. did you uh, get you know maybe say hey, maybe they could go on a run if Cabrera's back gets I hot? I think they should just sit him. You, you thought so? Why risk, like, why, uh... Increase your chances for a, like a long-term devastating injury. I mean, you don't need it. You got so much money invested, and you pay him twenty-two million dollars a year. And uh, why, why, I mean, why would you risk a long-term injury? The guy comes back, and he could destroy his body. They're five mm-hmm. games under five hundred. He went zero for three last night. So I mean, I mean, I'd rather see him in there than Jeffrey Marte. I don't even know who the hell that guy is. I'm literally about to cry because of that. It's a tough situation. So they can't score any runs. Simon. Uh, he stayed, uh, I read on number live, he, he fell behind the pitchers and failed to find consistency with a splitter and a curveball. He, he went uh, to three ball, to, uh, he went to three ball counts on 11 hitters through five innings. He's 10 and six, but his ERA is north of four, and just like everybody else's. He gave up six mm-hmm. hits and walked four guys and gave up four uh, runs. Mm-hmm. And they don't score. They don't score at all. And that's pretty much all I have on them. Yeah. I, well, okay. Verlander's this... pitching, uh, he's one and five. With his ERA is four point five seven. It's they not... pay him twenty seven million dollars a year. Yeah, it's a tough situation. I want twenty seven million dollars. <laughs> it's a tough situation, Vinny. And yeah, you're right. But some news outside of the field was brought up this week. Al Avila did write, did come out and say that you know what, the Tigers are a little bit are behind the times in terms of analytics and the use of sabermetrics, and they promoted oh, guys. Is, did he say that? Yes, he said that. Oh, you know what? We're in big trouble. No, no. But listen, he said. We are behind the times in the use of uh, numbers to kind of analyze what's going on in the game. It's a big thing now in baseball is, is looking at stats and how um, these advanced numbers show how a player is going to do. Oh, we're, it's, it's called a, It's like a matter of time before we hire Manny Acta to be our manager. Mm-hmm. So then now he said that the Tigers are behind the times, but he is vowing to look at that part of the game much more. He's pretty much saying that Dave Dombrowski spent all that money the last 10 years and they're not going to go in that direction anymore. No, that's not what he said. Yeah, that is pretty much what he's saying. All the teams that have a small payroll talk like that. Listen, the, Vinny, the reason why you need to know those numbers is it puts you in a statistical advantage in order to, you know, uh, with the batters, with the pitchers, who are you going to go get? This is what they need, a yeah. bullpen. That's it. And the how, team on offense is ferocious, and they have a great team on offense. And, and their infield's solid. Their starting pitchers and their bullpen mm-hmm. are terrible. Yeah, but then how are you going to I don't want to hear about Saber metrics. Get your ass a couple starters and a couple guys in the bullpen. Okay, now. Okay. I think you'll win the division again next year. Now you're saying, okay, they get a couple Brad guys. Oh How God. are you going to know which guys to get? They use these numbers to I don't to know. Do I look like a general manager? Now, if you let me finish, I'll tell you. The reason why they look at the numbers is, okay, you got these two players, and you say, oh, this guy has a, a higher ERA and a higher whip compared to this guy, player B, you're going to go with the guy that has the better stats and the better sabermetric numbers. So, yes, you are right. They are going to pay less on the payroll, but they're going to use numbers to pick the right guys, and uh, you need to do it. That's the, mm. that's the trend. That's the way you need to look at the numbers. Now, it's not. I agree the eye test and meeting players and things like that is something that's very important. But you need to also know the numbers. And the Tigers haven't. And now they're going in that direction. And I'm fully happy that will um, help them to pick the right players that you want in the starting rotation and the bullpen. 
Sabermetrics, man. You need to get into it. I'm going to teach you about it. Sabermetrics, numbers. Uh, wow, I can't Whip, wait to learn. ERA, strikeout per nine innings. You got to know that stuff, bro. If you I want... do know that stuff. You know that stuff? I don't know anything about war or anything, but yeah, I know Sabermetrics. Okay, good. <laughs> good. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna you know get you to talk more about in future podcasts. Oh no, no, I, you, no I, I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right, sounds exciting. No, yeah. it's not exciting. It's not, Julia. It's not. You want to lose some people? Start talking about sabermetrics. Yeah, <laughs> just that word. They're turning baseball into science. Yeah, it's just a bunch of guys hitting a baseball good. out of the park. So, Juliet, you are disappointed, huh? The Tigers are not going to be in probably in the playoffs this year, huh? And you're you, you follow mm-hmm. baseball a little bit. A it's, little bit. Are you are you a little bit sad that uh, the run is probably going to be over of winning for the Tigers in a while? Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I guess mm-hmm. I just haven't been paying attention because all I hear is, oh, they suck. Oh, they suck. Yeah. No one cares. They suck. They yeah, suck. it's kind of a bummer, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things where they were close. They got to the World Series twice. Did mm-hmm. you get to go around town in the playoff run with your boyfriend? That's, that's yeah, that's what I was talking <laughs> yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. It was that year, yeah. And, uh, man, it was just so close. That that vibe when the team is winning is unbelievable. That yeah. energy, people are having fun. It's awesome. They're out there having fun before the game. And now, when it's like that, it makes it makes like a Wednesday night at work kind of slow, right? The Tigers you know, started off eleven and two. They're forty four and fifty eight cents. Oh, that's horrible! Forty four and fifty eight cents. Their start. That's terrible. Yeah. Do you think then uh, now it's time to just kind of start talking about you Firing know Brad Osmus? on one hundred five one? They said that potentially Brad may not be fired. He may just move his family back to San Diego. Who who said that on one hundred five one? It was on one hundred five one. Oh, he's fired. You think he's fired? He's moving his family back to San Diego? They said Who said the, that? Uh, I'm not sure which host, but it was on 105.1. Hmm. I heard it. They said that potentially, I think it was Matt Derry. He said that, uh, he tweeted out that uh, reports are kind of going around that San Diego might have an opening, and he likes it back in uh, his hometown of San Diego, and he might go back there. Maybe, small chance. The worst hire of all time. Yeah, not good. It, it was like, it's worse than Ron Marinelli. How disappointed are you, Vinny, in this season? Are you about to cry? No, I told you they're going 500. They're, they they're worse than that. And it imploded. And now... And everyone's fighting in the dugout. It's disgusting. You know what you realize? I don't want to put up with that. Vinny, you know what you realize, too, and Juliet? When a team is struggling, the season is so long. It's just like, oh my gosh. You know, I try to tune not in. Not really. It's when you're not watching long. it, it's not that long. I will say that's my problem, is I tune in every single it's night. It's so gut-wrenching, ain't it? I'm, I watch every single game, and I'm trying, I'm like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. I'm, like, I'm not going to drink today. I'm not going to drink today. And you watch it, I'm like, I'm drinking. <laughs> you're drinking. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's one of those things where the Tigers are disappointing, and uh, it's, I think it's time to kind of you know focus a little bit less on them and now really ramp up for, the, for football. Oh, and my God. The Lions keep you on the bandwagon. Dude. All right, Vinny, is that, is that, t- that time? Of the, it, it is. Is it time of the show for yes, length or girth? It, it's length or girth. Tell Juliet what uh, <laughs> length or girth Please. is. Please. <laughs> we're gonna, She's we're, fascinated. We first started our show, what was it December? Yeah, ar- around early January. Okay. Well, we were going to name our show Length and Girth. Vetoed by they, the doc. Yeah, they wouldn't let me do it, so we came up with you a segment. Called length or girth, length is long term and girth is short term. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Doc, don't cry. I won't cry. Let's <laughs> go. All right. So this is, one. this is length or girth. Yes. Question number one on length or girth. Uh, your boy, Amir Abdullah. Ball handling issues in college. Uh, I didn't see that Thursday against the Jets. Seven for uh, 67 yards and a 45-yard uh, breakaway. Uh, dude, Amir Abdullah's consistency with uh, ball control and big runs. Length of girth. His consistency will be length. He'll be very consistent. You think so? Yes, I think. And here's the thing. When you look at the numbers, his four years at Nebraska, the number of fumbles that he had went down steadily. And he had a high number of fumbles his freshman year. And a lot of times, too, he fumbled in the kick return game. I think that as a professional, he's going to work on his craft, and I think he's going to be a... I really like Amir Abdullah based on what we've seen in training camp and his first game, so I think he's going to be work hard, he's going to be a great professional, and he's going to not have issues with fumbling. Because if he does, my goodness, he's going to hear it from the fans and he's going to lose the crowd quickly. But uh, he's, I think uh, length, he's going to be very consistent and he's going to be a long-term player for the Lions. Look for it. I'd like to go length, but I don't... Oh, damn it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to go length, too. Uh, that's right. That's I'd like good. to say girth. Their offensive line, uh, I don't know. On paper, it looks good, but uh, I don't know. It can't get any worse than Reggie Bush. Let's go length. Question number two, Darius Slay, your boy, talks a lot of garbage. Talks a lot of smack. Try to compare themselves to uh, Seattle Seahawks secondary, and uh, I don't think so. He was burnt twice by Brandon Marshall and Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he dropped an interception. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the uh, defensive line, but the secondary didn't look as good as I thought it was going to look. 
Uh, question number two, Darius Slade. Being behind wide receivers, I think they're good. Oh, I think Gurf. I, I like a guy that has bravado, and I think that he made he made steady progressions last year. And we've got to remember that in training camp, you, you're working out all the kinks and making sure that you make the mistakes early and work on your you work on your um, techniques and things like that. You got to remember when it counted last year versus Des Bryant, he held him down for the most part. And Darius Slade's a confident guy, and I think he's got talent, and he's made steady progressions each of the first couple of seasons in his career. I think that a guy like that with bravado and confidence. Should keep it going, and it's football. He's gonna have such, and and you know, in football, they make it towards the offense. If he even touches a guy like that, the flag is thrown. So he's got it's it's a, it's a tough position to play, and just because you see him get burned doesn't mean that he's not you know super effective at other times. He's a good player, and I think he'll show it. He's gonna be a key factor in that defense. Look for it. I want to go Girth too, but uh, I don't think he's gonna have as good as a year as he did last year because of Sue and Fairley being on. That's a fair point. It, it, it really is a fair point, and it's length or girth, and I'm trying to make a point, and you're just not going to let me do it, are you? No. Okay. You put me to sleep, man. You're making me cry. Are you serious? <laughs> no. I know. I'm hungover. <laughs> I go, dude, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to be alive in this episode. I'm going to really good. just give it my all. No crying, and it's all good. everyone's falling asleep, which leads me to the question number three on length or girth. Uh, dude, Geno Smith got punched in the face, and he's got his jaw broken. Did you let you hear that story? No. Okay. I'm going to fill you in real fast. So... I guess, you know, these are teammates on the Jets, the team that we just played. And I guess that, you know, this teammate named I.K., Ick is his first, as is the spelling of his first name. Okay. He was supposed to go, like, event that happened. And so something happened. Uh, I think Geno Smith had a death in the family. He didn't go. Well, I.K. paid 600 bucks out for Geno to fly out and pay, paid money. So they're in the locker room chatting it up, and he's like, you know, kind of, hey, you know, can you kind of pay me back to 600 I invited you out. I paid for your ticket. I know something happened, but pay me back. And Gino kind of blew him off one, two, three times. So they had, a, they, you know, as guys tend to do, they got in each other's face. And Ick's like, oh, okay. Boom. Dropped him. Broke his jaw. What? Punched him in the face. Dropped him. And uh, Gino Smith's out six to ten weeks with a broken jaw. And uh, uh, IK got cut from the team. He punched him in the Wait, face. these are guys on the same team? Guys on the same team. That, that fought. It's $600. It's money. It's, uh, $600 is going to knock out his own teammate? That's kind of the re- that's when that's when the talk around town is like, why would he do that for over 600 bucks? But, you know. And some, then they caught him and Rex Ryan picked him up. Isn't that genius? One thing you realize, you know, with guys, we have, we're, we're very prideful. And sometimes we don't think rationally. And when it comes to money and maybe some respect issues, we do fight over that. So that's what happened. Mm. But uh, go ahead. Making excuses. <laughs> uh, you're right. That's why he got cut. He was gone just like that. Boom. Cut from the team. Well, I was thinking, I don't know that that Bryce Petty guy or Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to take over his spot. He said he's out six to ten weeks, but uh, it could be longer. Length or earth? Length. No, I think Geno Smith, you know, once Fitzpatrick gets in there, he should have a, a, a monicum of success. He's very... A what? Monicum of success. It's a big word, Vinny. I know. You see all the degrees. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to explain it to you either. <laughs> I think he's going to be somewhat successful. He's not going to take you to, you know, a deep run in the playoffs, but he's a guy that can be serviceable. Geno Smith... Just is turnover prone. He's not professional. He doesn't garner any respect. And he may get in there for a game or two, but his play on the field is so horrid that, you know, he'll be benched quickly for either Fitzpatrick, and if he doesn't have success, they'll get the rookie in. But Geno Smith's time in the NFL, short term, baby. He's gone. He's like Achilles Smith. Remember him? Oh, my gosh. I remember a lot of NFL boss. Remember Joey Harrington? No. (laughs) For the Lions? Number, I think number two or three pick, and uh, total disaster. What do you go, think? Uh, I want to go length. I think he's done. That's probably the best thing that ever happened to the Jets. Yeah. The people I want to like... punch him in the jaw right now. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just don't like Geno Smith. You like Geno Smith? No. You like Geno Smith, Juliet? No. I didn't think so. I can kind of see it. You like, you like the guys that do the punching, right? Yeah. See? There you go. Now, Vinny, this is the time God, where we really end the show. I punch Geno Smith in the jaw right now. This is the time in the show yeah, it is. where Vinny, because of his tails, He's around town. He's in the bars. And this is what we call the Get Laid Bar of the Week. Yes, it is. The Get Laid Bar of the Week. Ironwood Grill of Plymouth 840 Ann Arbor Trail in Plymouth. Sports bar with a sophisticated vibe offers smoked barbecue, stone-fired pizzas, and wall-mounted TVs. Sounds cool, right? Well... Getting you laid is cooler. Four to one woman to dude ratio, and I promise you that if you just find it in your uh, inner get laidness, you will indeed get laid. Do it for the Motor City Sports Rant. Do it for DetroitSportsPodcast.com. Do it for the Lions, Tigers, and Red Wings. Hell, do it for the Pistons. 
but more importantly, do it for yourself. Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. Oh, my God. Juliet, what did you think of this mess? That we just <laughs> was it a last disaster? Time? It was pretty good. You had fun. Oh, yeah, it's fun. God, See, I stop. Like I hang out with the wrong people. They're like, I'm like, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to get off work. I'm going to do a lot of research for this podcast, and it's going to kick ass. Soon as I get off work, getting drunk, going to the titty bar for Peter, the 21-year-old virgin. Okay, I'm like, okay, okay. I'm buzzed. I'm going to set my alarm clock for 7.30. It went off like three times, and I just kept, no. I kept resetting it. So I didn't wake up till 10. Well, the good thing is, Vinny, I think Juliet knows it wasn't <sighs> all that bad because of me. That's all. I'm here to kind of guide the ship and interview the lovely guests. And I'm really happy that you came in. I'm not even knowing Vinny. I thought you knew him. And I was no. like, eh. no, no. You're really brave. Good for you. Thanks. What about me? I had a messenger. I'm brave. You are brave. I, I, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm shocked that you would just message a random person and be like, come to our podcast. That's awesome. And uh, you did great. You had well, fun. What do you want me to do? Bring Pete in? Uh, no, no. If you, He's in shit. You should have brought Pete in. Well, what? Now, now you know that if you come back to Michigan, you have a spot. You can come in and chat with us anytime. You have a spot here. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Yes, thank you. It was fun. Very good to get to know you a little bit, and uh, hopefully we wish you good success in Florida. Find the nice guy and uh, kind of come back. <laughs> can come back. Come back. Come back. I'll come yeah. back to visit. Okay, good. Very good. And then hopefully the Tigers will give us all a reason to cry and win a championship here very soon. Uh, don't count on it. Don't count on it? That'll pretty much just do it, though. For uh, Motor City Sports, we're at DetroitSportsPodcast.com. Ha, 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 ha.